everybody. I'm Fia Alexander for the Rose Center. And today I'm introducing Heather Ash Amara, who is doing a workshop at Roe on November 15th through 17th. And it's called Wild Willing Wisdom, When to Paddle, When to Rest, and When to Jump Naked into the River of Life. Welcome, Heather Ash. I'll Thanks so much, Ash. Fia. Yeah, thank you. Grateful to be here. Great. So, first of all, just a preliminary question. I understand a good friend of yours invited you to come to Roe and encouraged you to come to Roe. And I wondered what it is about Roe that made you willing to come and interested to come. Mm, I have heard so much about Roe over the years from my friend Matt, Matthew Stillman and just the experiences that he's had and the community that I've seen around those experiences was the first place of like, oh, what's happening there? It's very community oriented. That was the first, I love community and I love places that hold sacred space to help community to be fostered. And then the second was just knowing the Berkshires and that area of Massachusetts and how much beauty there is. And to be able to do a workshop where there is a beautiful container that has been held for so many years and that is immersed in the natural world i'm a yes so i'm excited to get to be there and share this information oh that's great so about your workshop could you share a little overview of what it will be about and what the participants can expect from it yes I'm working with these three archetypes of wild, willing, and wise. I'm so excited about this workshop is that these three archetypes were inspired by my research and study of the maiden mother crone, which is archetypes that many of us are familiar with and that have been really helpful in my life. Those three archetypes have been incredibly helpful. And as I started researching, I got curious of like, what if we could bring these archetypes into the modern world in a way that aren't gendered? and also aren't linear, that it's not about youth and middle age and adulthood. It's really about a circle and coming back into relationship with all of these different parts of ourselves. So that's what we'll be playing with is exploring how do we reconnect with our wild, with our creativity and our passion and our joy and our spark of exploration and being messy. And the willing energy, which is The wild is our spark and our like, yes, let's do this. And the willing is, all right, now how do I hold steady through challenges or hard times? How do I grow something? So the willingness is connected to our courage and our building of relationships and staying steady through a long-term relationship, whether that's our own spiritual path, whether that is... a a partnership, whether that's a child or a business, we need willingness to continue to show up and be sustainable. So we'll be also exploring how do we grow things and say sustainable. And then the wisdom is the connection to our stillness, our calm, our deep patience, and faith. How do we develop faith that we can open into all possibility and stay still and listen to our intuition. And we need all three of these energies. So we'll be exploring and playing with them in a lot of interactive ways. We'll be having a lot of fun and a lot of also deep connection and also looking at how do we bring them into our lives. So one of the things I love working with people is for people to bring specific places that they're stuck in their lives or that there's like tension And for us to together look at, well, do you need more wild? Do you need to turn down your willing? Because some of us are over willing. We have an excess of willing. So we're going to look at how do we balance these energies inside of us. That sounds really great. I love that you've turned the mother maiden crone into something further. That's marvelous. So what inspired you to design it around the metaphor of paddling and navigating the river of life? Mm -hmm. Such a good question. So I was writing this book in the middle of the pandemic. And I was really curious about what are we going to need on the other side of this experience where all of our lives have gotten upended in such a huge way. And it made me think about experience I had on the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. And there was an experience that I had where I was with two experts. We were on the river 
And five days into the trip, we were going through a tiny rapid and our boat got flipped. It was such a shock because it was such a small rapid and like we were not expecting it at all that I found myself completely out of my body and thinking like, God, that person's really panicking. There's somebody that's really, really struggling down there. Like I heard this sound of, I was like, wow, they're really suffering. And then boom, I realized it was me and I was in this huge river. And so when I remember that feeling, I'm like, that's what it feels like right now. It feels like we've all landed in this huge river and we're not even sure which way is up or down. And so I started playing with that metaphor of ri- the, that life is like a river and that there's times when it's calm. There's times when we can get rejuvenated and we can daydream and look around and feel connected. And there's also times when the river's really, really rough, where the rapids are high, where it's scary, when we're not sure how we're going to do it. And that through even those big rapids, we can get more skillful in how we help ourselves navigate through the hard times in life. And so the book then became, and the workshop will talk about this wonderful way to to check in with where am I in my life right now? Am I in the boat or am I in the water? Have I pulled the boat up to the side and I'm like, I'm not getting in that river. It's scary. Am I trying to paddle everybody else's boats? So we can immediately start to get a sense of, of what I call, get ourselves on the map of where we are in relationship to life at this time and then start to figure out, all right, how do I use these three guides? Because those three guides then can help us get back into the boat, point in the right direction and to start to gain skills of how to be in a relationship with both the calm parts of the river and the, the rough parts of the river and when to paddle when to rest and when to jump naked, when to be like, all right, I just need to celebrate. I need just need to jump in and let go of trying to figure this all out. And we, we need all of that. We need more skills paddling. I think we need more skills resting and we need more skills just letting it all go. That's grand. So it's divided into three sections. Can you explain what each section will cover? And how they contribute to the overall experience. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to do a deep dive into each of those of the qualities of wild, willing, and wise. So section one will be really focused on the wild energy and what it means to be balanced wild. And I'm a very somatic person. So we'll really explore what does it feel like in our bodies to connect with our wild when it's balanced and how to express it and what are the gifts of wild. And then we'll start exploring what happens when we're out of balance. So for some of us with our wild, we have a deficiency of wild. We shut our wild down of trying to be safe, of procrastinating, of holding ourselves back. And others of us have an excess of wild where we are scattered and we're like, I don't care about the consequences. I'm just going to do things. And so to get this sense of where am I in relationship with my wild and to learn how to tune. Because I don't think any of these qualities are bad. It's not that this is good and the excess or deficiency are bad. They're just qualities. We'll get to explore and work with each other about how to find the the centered beauty of balance in our life. And then we'll also, within each of the sections with WILD, we'll also then explore where are we in relationship with other people that are like excess WILD or deficient WILD. So that we can bring curiosity. That's a mark of wild is how do we get curious in our lives? How do we bring that sense of openness to ourselves and others? So that'll be section one. Then section two will focus on the willing. And again, the balanced willing is the fire inside of us is bright. And we know when to put more kindling in or when to put a bigger log. And there's a relational quality with our fire. When we're balanced with our willing, we are steady, we're sustainable, we're strong. And so we'll be exploring it through visualizations, through journey work, through movement, a little bit of movement practice just to get it in our body. What does balanced willing feel like in relationship with ourselves and life? And then deficient and excess. We'll be going 
into the deficient of willing of when we're scared, when we are using in our head too much, when we're unwilling to take risks or to, to stay steady. And then also with excess willing. And a lot of us are out of balance with excess in that direction. So I'm sure we'll do a lot of work with that as well in exploration of codependent, trying to row everybody else's boats, uh, trying to feed everybody else's fires, like come back. How do we get in our own boat and get pointed the direction that we're going and find our sustainability so that we're not burnt out or overwhelmed? And I have a lot of tools to share with people about how to turn down the overwhelm to get more present and creative and courageous in relationship to our willing. Because that's the, the quality of willing is our courage to, to be in right relationship with our courage. So we'll be exploring that a lot in the second section. And then the third one, we'll delve into wise, into the wisdom and how they all fit together. So I think about that they're they're circles that we're in the middle. We're trying to find where am I in relationship to these three qualities and that really wise contains all of them. So learning to witness, learning to connect to our intuition, learning to get more quiet and develop our patience, which is what we, we... naturally happens when we're in balance with our whys. And we also get really compassionate. So we'll talk about and explore the quality and feeling sense of compassion towards ourselves and others. And then look at how we can go out of balance with our whys and do journey work and tools to come back into right relationship. So it'll be dynamic. Each of the sections will be dynamic. There'll be a lot of also space for questions and specific experiences that people are navigating. I also tend to share a lot of stories of places that to to illustrate like, here's what this might look like in each of the sections taking out of just concept and into each of our experience, and then working together in ways to find balance so that people go home feeling resourced and having a skill set of like, okay, I know what to do when I start moving towards being overwilling, I know how to start to turn that down and come back into my tending my fire instead of everybody else's, for example. I think you've effectively answered about three questions here, which is great because it sounds like you're going to guide us through all three of those. And you have strategies for staying centered when we're facing challenges and navigating difficult emotions. Would you like to speak a little more on that part? Absolutely. That is going to be such a beautiful piece of this workshop too. And and getting to have time to create a safe space and a safe container so that everybody feels held, that we can then start to explore where are their old emotion, where's their emotion, old emotional content that is ready to be moved. So I think about it in this way that our bodies are incredibly wise and that we often have this huge backpack of old emotional content and stories that we haven't known how to process and we just stick it in the backpack. And so if you don't have skills when you're a child or as a a young adult or as an adult, instead of being able to move emotion through or untangle stories as they arise, we often put them in a backpack and they get more tangly. It's almost like you've ever had a bunch of jewelry or a bunch of cords and you put them in a bag and like you wait five minutes and somehow they tie themselves together. That's what can happen with our emotional content and the stories we tell ourselves. And so we'll be putting the backpack down together and starting to open it up to start to look with love at what do we have? What are the old emotions or the old stories that have gotten tangled together that we can start gently with compassion, with courage, with curiosity, untangling. And that it's a really heart-centered process. What most of us have learned to do is like, I want to get rid of this. I've either shove it back in the backpack and just hold on to it or tie it tighter because we don't realize we actually need to bring in the gentleness of untangling the places that have gotten tied together. And it's actually beautiful in a longer workshop like this. And this is why I'm also so excited to come to Row. And this will be the first time I've done a big workshop on this particular topic. (laughs) So we'll get to dive 
deep into looking with each other at those tangles and then getting the the feeling sense in our body of what it would take to untangle it to create create space and to to get both the map and the concept of that but also the application in our lives so that everybody will get a skill set um, one of the things I'm going br- to bring into this workshop is what I call the warrior heart practice. And that's the place around un- uh, opening up and clearing old emotion is that often we've tied together emotion and story. What I'm, what's happening in my mind versus what's happening in my body. So we'll use this particular practice. It's a very specific, really simple practice. I've been doing it for over the last five years now. It's so profound and it just changes how we perceive ourselves and brings in the courage to untangle things. So we'll learn how to separate out what am I feeling? What's actually the feeling that's happening in my body separate from what I'm telling myself about the feeling. And we don't know how to do this often. We don't learn this as a skill set. And it's hard to do it by ourselves. But in a group, we can feel hell to start to feel, oh, right, I feel grief, or I feel anger, or I feel disappointed. So where's the disappointment in our body? How do we just be with that disappointment? Or how do we be with the grief? Or how do we be with the even joy? Some people are like, oh, I'm actually really joyful. But I think that I'm anxious, but I'm actually happy, but then I get anxious. And so to separate out and be like, oh, this is what's actually going on in this form, in this body, in this being with my emotional content. There's a sweetness of learning how to sit with ourselves and be with our emotion that is, is really life changing because it's the feeling sense I have of like when I've sat with someone who is really ill and that place where you're like, hi, sweetheart, what do you need? You need a little bit of water? Do you need, and then we get really present and that's what we can bring to ourselves of like, hi, sweetheart, what are you feeling? I'm here. I'm here with you. And that starts the process of really self-intimacy in a beautiful way. And then once we know what the, we start to get a sense of the feeling, then we can start to go, all right, what am I telling myself? What's the story? Where am I judging? Where am I frustrated in? And I've made this whole story up. Where am I being through victimization? And so we start to unpack the story as well. And Curious again, curiosity is so huge to witness what am I telling myself? And so often what I find when we're doing this work is that the the presenting problem is here and we're like, it's that person or this thing right here in my life. But it always ties back to something older. That when we're just trying to untangle this, the reason things don't often untangle is because we're not working with the right place. So I'll be sharing with people how to go deeper to find what's actually at more at the root and how to untangle the root. So that's just the beginning part. Then we work with truth and intent and come back around again. So it'll be very graspable. All of the work that I love sharing with people is that combo of here's the big picture and then here's how we get in the river and actually build the skills to get ourselves where we want to go getting clear about what our intent is so that we're more creative and joyful and courageous in relationship to our lives every single day. Well, that's very vivid about the untangling the cords and chains. That's, that sounds like fantastic work. Doing less can actually lead to achieving more. Apparently, how can participants apply this principle in their daily lives? It's a good question. You know, one of the things that's so coming to a retreat or going someplace like Roe is that you're, we're, we interrupt our lives. We step out of our lives and we're held in a space that allows us to look back at our lives from a different vantage point. And especially someplace where there's natural beauty and where there's history that I think that's that makes it even a, a more helpful container to step into. So often in our lives, we get caught in these patterns of paddling constantly and thinking like we're getting someplace. 
And I, I found that after the pandemic, there's this feeling, there's a lot more anxiety that many of us are feeling and feeling sense of not getting traction in our lives. And like, well, I just have to try harder to get the traction and to step out of our lives and be like, let's look at what's actually ours to do and how can we get grounded and centered again that instead of just doing we're like this is mine to do and this is where i want to put my energy that there's a simplicity that starts to be able to be seen that it's what i call sacred time management i and where this came from in my life is I used to run an organization. I lived in Berkeley, California many, many years ago. And I had a, an organization. And I recognized at one point that I was really busy, that everybody was like, we were always last minute. And there was all this chaos in the organization. And I stepped back and I'm like, this is me. Like this organization is reflecting my old patterns and habits. And so I took a year off and I got really curious in relationship. To, to work and structure and being in the world, what have I learned that's actually not beneficial? And what I started learning how to do is linking my myself to my intuition versus my busyness. And when we start linking ourselves to our intuition, there's we create this space around us that we get really quiet. And there's a place where we can then stop and feel into what's the next step. And I had a really quick feedback around this. So I'll share this because it's, you know, I think the tangible sometimes can be really helpful. Where I was on a book tour or something, I was making all these phone calls and I was like, start at the top of the list, go through all the people. And I was frustrated because I wasn't getting hold of people. It felt like so much work and, oh my gosh, this is going to take me forever. And I was like, all right, let me run the experiment. What if it is less is more? What if that was actually true? So I got really quiet and I opened my heart and I was like, all right, what's my next action? And I got this really clear, it was seven in the morning, call this person now. And I was like, it's seven in the morning. I can't call that person. I started arguing with the voice. It's like, this is your next step, sweetheart. Call this person now. And again, I was like, it's that like my logical mind got in there. Like I can't da 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 da. And again, call them now. It's like, all right, fine. So I picked up the phone. I called the person on the list who wasn't at the top of the list. They were in the middle of the list. They answered the phone. Within five minutes, I booked something. It was like a really great conversation. Boom. And I was like, ah, it worked. Okay. It takes a lot of practice to keep coming back to that. And that the foundations of what we'll share with the sacred time management, which will get woven in is this place where when we're connected to our whys, when we're connected to our intuition, and we settle in and open to receive guidance and information, things get much simpler. Because instead of being guided by our mind, which sometimes is not helpful, the worry, the anxiety, the figuring out, the like, I've got to do it right, all of that stuff, we start to center into our heart and listen for what's next. And we all have this incredible weaving guidance system, I believe, where we're connected to other humans, we're connected to nature, we're woven together in this beautiful tapestry. And as we slow down, we can start to feel the tapestry and the, the threads. And I like to think about that there's this divine force, whether we call it our higher self, whether we call it God, goddess, creator, whether we call it life. You know, my teacher is Don Miguel Ruiz. My deepest mentor is Don Miguel Ruiz of the Four Agreements. And he would just say, life is moving. Life has intent. And when we learn to listen to those, the intent of life, things can move very quickly. Because life, intent, God, goddess, creator moves quickly. And so that's what we're starting to open into is that simple, where's the line of energy? Where's the intuitive knowing? Where's the, the thread that we can follow that can guide us? And it takes connecting to our stillness. Based on your experience, what kinds of personal transformations or insights have past participants reported while attending your workshops? Mm -hmm. 
gosh, I just did this workshop in Sedona that it was a really interesting workshop because 95% of the people had never heard of me, didn't, hadn't read a book and were like, but this is it. Like I'm, I want to come. Like they just knew for a group of people to go from strangers by the end of the workshop people had new best friends they felt incredibly connected they felt a sense of belonging so just that i'm really good at holding container for people to feel safe and to meet each other and to be held and then also people always when they come to workshops have a sense of like i thought something was broken or wrong with me but now i see that i my perception was just out of balance I just needed to call in my wild. I just needed to find the balance of my willing. I just needed to connect with my wisdom. And so there's that tangible sense of like, I know how now to go have this hard conversation that I've been avoiding, or I now know in relationship with my teenage son, what the next step is. So there's that that very practical feeling sense of hope of places that felt difficult in the past. And there's also this sense of inspiration that people leave with of like, oh, I can do this. I've got people that see me. I feel the sense of connection that I had lost. And I think that's really important now, especially post pandemic. Well, we're not quite post, right? We're still navigating so much. And so there's a place where being together again and, and many of those folks, this was the first thing they've done, like that they've come kind of out of their houses and were like, I don't know about this. And to have that sense of like, it's safe, I'm seen, I'm held, I can be where I'm at. People often say, I feel pressured in the way that I often pressure myself. I felt invited to become more myself and to love where I'm at and to be honest with where I'm at. And it gives us this opportunity to to be supported in landing where we're at rather rather than where we think we should be at. And that's huge. So that's a lot of what the magic that happens when we come together in the same place to do work together. It can be fun. And transformative. Yes, and very transformative. So my last question really is, for those intrigued by the themes of this workshop, what would you recommend as a next step to explore it further, either with you or on their own? Absolutely. So there is a book, The Wild, Willing, and Wise, that is a workbook. So that's one place is to to check out the book and see if you're a book person, like it's a workbook. So there's, you can write on it and you can take, there's quizzes and there's inspiration around what next steps to take of getting back into balance with our wild, our willing and our wise. I'm also doing little podcasts right now that are, and they're, they're actually live that I'm about to turn into podcasts with their Wednesdays at 11 o'clock Eastern time, half hour check-in. So you go to the website, Wild Willing Wise to get more information about that. And that also reach out to our team or reach out to Ro that if you're like, I think this might be a match. Like my, the beautiful group of people that I work with that have been with me for years are really good at like, you know, what's the hesitation? Let's talk about it. And also like, if it's a match, we'll tell you. If we feel like it's not a match, we'll tell you. So feel free to really reach out to Hello at Warrior Goddess or to the row team. So I know the row team is the same way as well, that there's a an interest in like what will be best fit for you that at this time. So those are some ways to explore. Well, that's true. And I recommend that people look at your website because your backstory is so interesting. We probably don't have time to talk about it all right now, but all the things you've done and places you've been starting with that experience as a child in India. So I think people will have an incredible experience with you at Roe. And again, that's on November 15th through 17th. So I think unless you have other things you'd like to say, we're probably ready to finish. 
Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, Bia, so much for taking the time to to interview and for everyone to take the time to listen to this. And yeah, warriorgoddess.com is one of the websites, wildwillingwise.com. And I so hope to see some of you at Row and to get to share from the heart of how we can untangle and land to become more of ourselves from a heart-centered, playful, courageous, compassionate place. Much gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Radio Row with our host, Fia Alexander and special guest Heather Ashamara. If today's conversation has inspired you to delve deeper into into this topic, we invite you to attend Wild, Willing Wisdom, When to Paddle, When to Rest, and When to Jump Naked into the River of Life led by Heather Ashamara, November 15th to 17th at the Rowe Center in Western Massachusetts. To register or learn more, please visit rowcenter.org or click the link in the description. We hope to see you there. Until next time, thank you for being part of our community.